Hey folks, Dr. Reeves here again. Neurology. We're going to talk about neurology stuff, and this video is about the vagal nerve stimulator. VNS for short, and it's about um, the size of a, of a regular pacemaker. And like a pacemaker, it's put underneath the skin uh, below the collarbone on the left. So there's a, there's a cut there, and the vagal, the vagal nerve stimulator, the VNS, is placed here, and the surgeon uh, tracks the wire underneath the skin, makes another cut here on the left side of the neck, and fishes out the, the vagal nerve there, and wraps the little electrodes around the nerve without damaging the nerve, and puts it back in there. And we program this unit. And like a, a, a pacemaker, the, the unit gives electrical impulses. So we, we can program it through the skin. We've got a little computer device, a little handheld computer thingy we, we hold over that. We can plug in different values. And, and the bottom line is this thing intermittently sends electrical stimulation to the vagus nerve. And for reasons which remain not quite clear, intermittently electrically stimulating the vagal nerve can reduce seizures in many people. Now, this does not replace using medications. In a sense, it's kind of like a medicine, except that, it, it, there, for example, there's a dose and there's a frequency, except it's not taking the medicine in, in pill form, if you will. Um, the, the vagal nerve stimulators have been around for oh, about a couple decades now, and so the, this will, will often we'll have this program, so it's stimulating every minute or two or three for seven seconds or 14 seconds or something like that. Now, there's two things about the VNS in a sense. It works kind of two ways. The first way is um, that it's, it's in there and whatever we've programmed it at, you know, it, it stimulates the nerve on again, off again. Day in, day out, the unit is delivering stimulation to the vagal nerve at, for seven seconds, every 1.1 minutes or whatever we have it set at, at a certain strength. And that reduces seizure frequency in many people. Um, now, the amount of, of stimulation that people can take is rather variable. We'll get to that in a minute. So that's the, the kind of the main way it works. Now, there's another kind of way it works, or another thing it's used for, if you will, in a sense. And, the, and that is that when you get a VNS, they give you these, these little magnets. Uh, they're kind of strong little magnets. There's nothing special, really, about the magnets. It's just, just a strong little magnet. And if you swipe the magnet across the unit, Kind of, and you, you literally just take the magnet and, and you just kind of go about that fast across the unit. It, we can program the unit so it'll give this little turbo boost of stimulation, if you will. Now, the idea behind this was some people um, have the, uh, between the start of the seizure and when the seizure really gets kind of full blown, there's enough time that they might say, hey, something's happening here, you know, get the magnet out and swipe it. The idea being that maybe it could abort a seizure or shorten a seizure. That it might. I, I gotta say I've looked at some of the data from the company collected over the years and, and I remain not quite convinced that the turbo boost, kind of the magnet thing, really uh, has been proven to my satisfaction to be of substantial benefit. Now psychologically it's a great benefit because for the first time uh, when there's something like a seizure, oh, a seizure is coming on, people have something that they or a caregiver can do. It may or may not really shorten the seizure. I suspect that there's some folks out there for, for whom it does. Probably for many it doesn't, but regardless. So you don't get a VNS because you think that swiping the magnet is going to help stop seizures or shorten certain seizures. You get it because day in, day out, week in, week out, it would be in there stimulating that nerve and reducing seizures. Well, let's talk about reducing seizures. How much? That's quite variable. But the first thing to understand about a VNS is it's what we call a palliative device. That means it's not intended to cure. It is intended to reduce a problem, not eliminate a problem. So when the, the units first came on the market, I had patients coming to my office saying, I want to get that pacemaker thing so I can quit my drugs and be seizure-free. No, it doesn't work like that. If you take 100 people or 1,000 people, 
who are have seizures which are not controlled with medication and you put vagal nerve stimulators in them the VNS and you check back every six months 12 months 18 months on average you see the, a reduction in the number of seizures that are, people are having and on average you see a reduction in the amount or number of medications people are taking so that's a good deal I mean that's nice the problem of course is on average you might have a 30 percent reduction a 50 percent if you're lucky a 60 or 70 percent no that would I've, I've had a few people that seem to have even up up to a 90 percent reduction in seizure frequency I've had people with clearly zero percent reduction I haven't seen anybody who had their seizures made worse with it uh, I'm not sure how that would happen but I suppose theoretically it could but never seen that never heard of it um, the the VNS though uh, can help in people for whom medications are not doing the trick if medicines were doing the trick keeping somebody seizure free why would you have a surgery to put the, the unit in here it doesn't make that much sense so the VNS definitely has a role and, and exactly where in the line of treating seizures and epilepsy the VNS should be considered that's a bit of a judgment call and, and by the way the VNS really is primarily useful for those who have partial onset seizures and if you're not sure what, exactly what partial onset means or, or localization related epilepsy I got another video on that but that's not this video so it's if if medicines are going to keep the problem under control go that way if medicines aren't going to keep the problem under control and some more definitive surgery on the brain to try to eliminate the seizure uh, seizure focus if you will if you can't do something like that then a VNS actually is a very reasonable thing should it be after they failed the third drug or the fourth drug or, 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 the, or the sixth drug that is a bit of a judgment call when I started doing epilepsy we really had basically four seizure medications on the market and so back in the day when we were thinking about surgeries we'd always say well they have to have tried all the drugs and some of the combinations before we would do surgery on the brain or put a VNS in or something like that well now we have well, 24 medicines and obviously you can't spend decades trying 24 different medicines and several combinations of different medications you, you're you can't justify that so at some point and this is what you need to talk about with your physician your epileptologist uh, a VNS may be reasonable but you must always decide before going into it what constitutes success the very first person I ever offered a VNS to was Stanley actually offered it to his foster mom Deb Deb was a wonderful woman uh, she his foster adoptive mom of Stanley um, took excellent care of him and on, on a good day Stanley would have about 15 seizures or so he had to, and he was profoundly mentally retarded and he was entirely dependent in his cares and when Stanley would get sick uh, he would have 20 or 30 seizures so I said to Deb this is a few years back I said to Deb um, you know we got this new device on the market uh, you know, maybe a third to half of uh, people may have a third to a half reduction in seizures those were the kind of statistics at the time and, um, and Stanley had literally tried every single anticonvulsant on the market including some which never even made it to market had been involved in drug trials and I said well you know if, if we got lucky if you will um, if the VNS helped you might see a third to a half reduction in seizure frequency so Deb would that make a difference to Stanley's quality of life or to your ability to care for Stanley and she looked at me and said that would make a bit of difference I said awesome great to know he shouldn't get a VNS and then I'll talk to somebody else who might have uh, five seizures a year which have been not controllable by medication and I'll say well you know what blah 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 what do you think about a VNS let's say we get to that point 
This is in somebody where uh, surgery to kind of actually take that, that bad focus out of the brain isn't possible. Uh, and that person might look at me and say, you know, Dr. Reeves, a 10%, 20% reduction of seizures in a year would be meaningful to me. Okay, 20% doesn't really sound like all that much, and it's not a great change. My point is everybody's different in what constitutes success. So you should really decide what constitutes success or progress before entertaining a VNS. So this is just a, a, uh, a kickoff to, to how you select patients. Little sidebar in what it's like to have a VNS in, and then we'll close it out. So when the VNS is in, it stimulates intermittently, and then when the, when the unit stimulates, people's voice changes a little bit like this. They get kind of hoarse, and then it stops when the unit is done stimulating. So if you like to sing in the church choir, that's a bit of a problem. Actually, if you tape the magnet over the unit when, when, during choir practice, uh, it, it won't fire. So there is a way around that. When, when the unit fires, particularly when we're sort of just dialing up on the strength, People may say uh, they have a tickle or, or, or cough, may cough a little bit or occasionally they'll even say it hurts a little bit in their throat. Usually that subsides over a day or two or three. It's so not, not uncommonly I'll, I'll, I'll uh, have a patient comes in and, and maybe we've been working our way up on the strength and I, I'll increase the strength uh, another quarter of a milliamp, just a little notch, and they'll, they'll cough a few times uh, when it fires in the office and, and then I'll hear three or four or five days later, yeah, I'm not really coughing so much anymore. I don't really notice when the thing fires. I've had a few folks who just really had very low tolerance for the VNS, and we just could never get very high on the stimulation. Um, the, uh, any device, any artificial device that's implanted could get infected, of course. Um, I think maybe I've seen that once. Uh, it's just the, it's the, the nature of the beast when you're putting... Uh, uh, electronic devices into people. Yeah. And the other thing to, to, to be aware of is it requires a fair amount of work on the part of the patient and or caregivers and the epilepsy specialist, meaning we're going to see each other a fair amount, particularly early on. So somebody gets a VNS put in, yeah, I'm going to see him back. We're going to program them pretty quickly. I'm going to see him back a month or so later. We're going to program them again. We're going to be dialing up on this. So for my patients who live uh, out in uh, dismal seepage, Minnesota, you know, two hours from, from here and near the end of the earth. Getting in to see me in the clinic to program this thing frequently may be actually a significant obstacle. So it, it is a, a reasonable amount of work, but it's okay. Lastly, to put a VNS in does not mean we stop tinkering with or trying to make progress with the seizure medications. So. It's not an either-or, it's a both-and. Lastly, I guess, uh, I think I'm on my fifth last point. The unit, the, of course, it's, it's battery-powered, so eventually it's going to die. And then it's going to have to be replaced. You can't just plug it into the wall and charge it up. And there are times we get to the end of the life of the unit, and how long the unit lasts depends partly on the unit. It's a 102 model, 103 model, what have you and what the settings are, kind of how high are you running it. But typically it's measured in a number of years. Two years would be pretty short. Um, I have some patients with VNSs that have been in for six, seven, even eight years before they start really pooping out. Sometimes we'll get to the end of the life of the unit and it won't be clear if it's doing anything. Um, people can't remember or, or maybe uh, I've had patients who have VNSs put in elsewhere in the country and then they move near me and now I'm taking care of them and nobody, nobody knows if it really did anything. Maybe the patient is not able to tell us. In those cases, we'll often just turn it off when it gets near the end of the, the service life and see if anything changes. If it does, you have your answer and a new one needs to be put in. And if it doesn't, eh, it wasn't doing much. So again, this is really just a, a platform for kicking off some questions, giving some general information about vagal nerve stimulators. By no means have we covered all the possible permutations of who should get one and when and why and what the issues are. This is education for asking informed questions and kind of refreshing some information gone over in the office. Have a good evening or day or morning or whatever time it is where you are right now.